Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, welcome to Unshackle Ministries in the city of Paramount, California. God is doing great and awesome things. That was a lovely time of worship and ministering unto the Lord this morning. And I pray that your spirits were being filled this morning, even as we worship. Amen? Amen. And praise God. Well, it's been, like I said, it's been a very busy beginning of the month. Hallelujah. I think I can't keep up like this no more. <laughs> uh, a wedding last Saturday, service on Sunday, court on Monday, and I forget what happened on Tuesday. <laughs> oh, I know what happened on Tuesday. I had to fix a car. <laughs> Uh, Bible study on Wednesday. Something happened on Thursday, but I don't recall. Uh, Friday was Sister Martha, and uh, and Saturday was uh, the 18th uh, birthday for my granddaughter Isabella. Yeah. It was a wonderful, wonderful time, and the Lord blessed me to have a heart to give her, because we want her to get her driver's license, to give her um, a, a car. So I gave her my my car that, um, my favorite car I gave it to her, oh. amen. So it was a, it was a little tear dripping when she seen the pink slip in her car. Um, but uh, praise God, amen. Um, somebody's got to use that car. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's nothing new, but it's something to get her started, you know, that little journey so she don't have to keep walking the college. Praise God. And um, I know God is good, and He sees all the good that we do as well. Amen. Later on, after service, well, not after service, but at the end of service, we're going to go ahead and do communion because last Sunday, I guess I was so excited about the Lord, I forgot about communion. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, we got wonderful things planned. I want to just let everybody know that um, we want everybody to continue to feel safe and secure when they come to church. But I'm going to go ahead and make the face mask um, thing optional. If you want to wear your face mask, you can wear it. If you don't want to wear it, you don't have to. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So. I told you this is Unshackled Ministries, set the captives free, amen? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, but if things get back to where they were, they will start being more careful, amen? Hallelujah. So you don't have to feel obligated or pressured to wear your face mask, amen? Then we can see smiles, we can see if you brush your teeth or not, amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Trouble a lot for my humorous ways, but um, praise God, God has something wonderful for us. Don't forget that um, Tuesday nights we have Zoom, uh, we have prayer, and we do it on Zoom because it's a little bit more personal, and um, and uh, this way everybody gets the chance to lay what's on their heart at the throne of God. Amen. So we have Zoom prayer every Tuesday night at seven fifteen. For those of you on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, if you would like to be part of that, you need to send us your information or just let us know um, if you want to be in, in our prayer or group and I will send you an invite. Amen. And, uh, and you can um, be part of it. And then on Wednesday nights, we always have our Wednesday night Bible study. And we had a good Bible study this past Wednesday where God really spoke to his people. I don't know if any of you got to see it. We're, we're actually uh, recording those and putting them on YouTube and putting them live on Facebook as well. And, um, and God is using them to touch people's lives. Amen. And uh, I like to always be open to what God wants to do instead of having, the, you know, like have everything made up and put in the freezer for this week and this week and this week. I know I like to give a nice, fresh, anointed meal of God's Word. Amen? So that it can nourish us and sustain us. For That's what we need to hear. Amen? 
Praise God. And that's what uh, today's word is going to be about as well. Amen. How many of you know that, um, so don't forget Bible study is every Wednesday night here at Chapel Ministries at 7, 5, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. And uh, we would encourage those of you that watch on Facebook and YouTube, come and be part of it. We're here in the city of Paramount. It's a beautiful city. We have a peaceful atmosphere here. And uh, it's not a very plushy place, but God's will is being done here. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And it will help you to be unshackled in the name of Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. And then I want to just encourage everybody too. I'm working on a, on a good message. And it's called Micro. Amen? And uh, it's going to be a, a wonderful testimony. And a good message about Sister Martha. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And you just love it. I know it. I already feel it in my heart. Amen? Amen. But she has a powerful testimony of what God has done in her life and the things God is still doing. Amen. And uh, you know, she's the one that, that the Lord reached out to and took her to the church so she could become a child of God. And then she came home. It's kind of like our story today that we're going to get into. Praise God. She came home and spread the gospel at home. And uh, some of us were a little more stubborn. But, you know, God's will, God's will and way prevailed. So praise God. So just keep your prayers in that. And one of these days you're going to hear me preach it. Amen. Hallelujah. But today I'm calling this message, um, When God Says Walk. It's better to obey than wait. Amen. 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 When God says to do something, it's better to obey than to wait. Praise God. Yeah. Sometimes, folks, we get all caught up in looking at our the things that are that are in front of us or blocking our blessings, you know, and the things that God wants us to do are right beyond that. But sometimes we get so fearful, so anxiety, so worried, or, or God, how is it going to happen? See, faith is faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Every day is a day to wake up and live by faith in your Savior, your Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because nothing is impossible with Him. Give your day to Him and let Him fill you with His Spirit and you will receive the goodness of God that day. Amen? Every day is a new day. Amen? Like I shared with you before, every day I wake up and I have this little plaque that's, uh, that's that I, I bought a while back and I have it there every morning because it says, you are the potter, I am the clay. So every day I say, Lord, mold me for this day. Amen. Make me who you want me to be in this day. Praise God. And it's an exciting time because then I have expectancy. I don't know everything that's going to happen during the course of the day. I don't know what's going to break, what kind of issues are going to come up. But faith says that God is going to help me no matter what it is. Amen. Because a lot of times we'll sit there and start trying to figure out the whys or why nots. And we're just, you know, so much focused on that. How is it going to happen? You know, who's going to do this? How is God going to make it all fit together? That's what we have to, to, to bear down. Amen. And we have to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and not lean to our own understanding in, in a lot of ways. Amen. Then you're going to see. Like that picture there when they were getting ready to cross the Red Sea. There was no way for them to get there. They didn't know what God was going to do. God didn't give them a newspaper or a letter or send it ahead of time and said, Don't worry about it. When you get there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to open the, the sea up for you to get through on dry land. No, it didn't. he didn't tell them that. They had to wait. So you know they were filled with anxiety. Amen. You know they were filled with worry. Amen. Much like Javier and Betty this last Monday. They were filled with anxiety. They had faith, but they were still filled with the anxiety and the, uh, the unknown. Amen. But you know what? God came through for them and Amen. us as well. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to continue to keep our hearts afresh like that. So when God says walk, it's better to obey than to wait. Amen. Amen. I want to share a scripture with you this morning. 
not going to keep you too long today. Find it. Praise God. It's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Praise the Lord. Did you guys like to worship this morning? Yeah. I thought it was awesome. These folks did a great and awesome work. Yeah. You tell it's anointed. God is they're praying. God is doing a great work and they're leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Mark chapter 16, starting on verse 1. Praise the Lord. When you're there, say amen. amen. Praise God. It says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb, or the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I pray that you use today's message to encourage us, help us, Lord God, in any indecisions that we might be going through today, Father God. Help us to see, Lord God, that you know, we have to do whatever it takes, Lord God, to see you, Lord God. And I just pray, Lord God, that you'll give us and quicken our understanding and open our hearts, that we may open our hearts, Lord God, to all that you have planned and have ready for us today in Christ's name. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says again, the first four verses it says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. So this was the work that they were about to do. I don't know why. I, I believe it's part of their custom. Amen. I know that when um, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus laid Jesus in the tomb, they covered him with the robe. Maybe I don't think they had time to anoint his body. So they were just going to do what's normally done at a Jewish burial. Amen. And they took it upon themselves, the three of them. Hello. So there they are, getting ready to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Amen. Now, I don't know exactly everything that, that they went through, but I know they had to come to some kind of understanding to work together. Amen. Because there's three different individuals. Three women, and all of them are going there for the same purpose. Hello? And I've seen like the way sometimes women can work together. They get things done. Hello? Yeah. I mean, boom, 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 and things are done. Hello? And it just happens. Praise God. Comes out good too. So their work, this is their work, that they bought and brought sweet spices. Amen? They had to get the spices from somewhere. They had to sacrifice something to go out there and spend this or go and collect this, whatever way they got it. They had to go out there and do it so that they could come and use it to anoint the body of their Lord Jesus Christ. Hello. Amen. 
A hasty but lavish embalming of our Lord's sacred body had been begun by Joseph and Nicodemus. They had brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. This would be a compound or a mixture of gum, of the gum of the myrrh tree and a powder of the fragrant aloe wood mixed together, which they would completely cover, with which they would completely cover the body, which was then swashed with linen clothes, also steeped in aromatic preparation. Amen. In other words, the clothes that they were going to use was had the same kind of stuff, a perfume for the body. Amen. And we know that after a certain time that, well, maybe you don't know, but after the body has been dead for a while, it starts to throw out odors that don't smell very good. Amen. But that's why this was their custom to put this over because they weren't really burying him in a grave. They were burying him in a tomb. That's what their custom was in some times. Amen. What had been done on the eve of the Sabbath had been done in haste. When Nicodemus and, 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 and Joseph of Arimathea, you know, got permission to take Jesus' body. Amen. They're two guys. So they were just trying to get it all done and get them covered in a, in a sheet or whatever that cloth is. Amen. Some say that the cloth that Jesus was covered with at that time is a cloth of uh, the something of Turin, ter ter Turin, ter ter the Shah of Turan, or something like that. Amen. And uh, you can see the image of Jesus when he's laying there, and he's at that moment, you know, passed away, dead. Are you hearing? So they did that stuff in haste, though. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> The remaining work could be done more carefully and tenderly at the tomb. So that's what I believe that the women were, were, you know, patted in their hearts and they would go take care of that. Amen. So they're getting up, you know, and you have to imagine, you know, that they're going to be doing this, you know, it's, it's their Lord, it's their, they, it's, they knew him, you know, and Mary Magdalene, he had done a miracle in her life and I believe probably in the other ones as well. Amen. Mary Magdalene was the one that Jesus cast seven devils out of. Are you here with me? Yeah. So she was coming to anoint her Lord. But as we'll see, the angel comes and tells him he's not here. Because obviously they forgot something, didn't they? Hello? They forgot what did he said that he would rise on the third day. Praise God. But nevertheless, they were going to take care of this great work. Amen? Amen. The Sabbath would have ended at sunset on Saturday, on the Saturday evening. And it was then that the women purchased the spices with which they intended to anoint the body of their Lord. Three women probably had, the three women had probably conversed or discussed about their needs and planned what to do. Amen? So they had everything covered, right? They knew what they were going to do. They probably had done this procedure before. So they were all, you know, knowing what they were going to do. Amen? They either paid for the goods or went out to gather from the trees which they needed them from. Amen? With loving care, with the loving care, the prepared embalming fluids or powders as soon as possible, they proceeded to the tomb in the garden. They, they got everything together. And they're on their way to the tomb where Jesus had been laid. Amen? In a garden. And we know that Calvary, what happened at Calvary disturbed their faith. They didn't know what was going to happen. They were kind of like in, you know, bewilderment because the resurrection hadn't happened yet. Amen? Jesus said that on the third day he would rise from the dead. Amen? It hadn't happened yet. So they're going through the normal things that they would do for a person that's dead. Amen? Now, again, I don't know, you know, why they didn't remember what Jesus said. 
or maybe they didn't understand what exactly was going to happen. Amen. It's like we are. We know that we're going to get raised from the dead. We know that one day, but if we're in the grave at that time that the Lord comes before we end up in the grave somewhere, amen? amen. Then he's going to call your name, just like he did to Lazarus. And he's going to say, Amber, come forth. He's going to say, Anthony, come forth. Martha, come forth. And the dead in Christ will rise from the dead. Amen. They will rise to live and die no more. Hallelujah. They will join the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who, who was King of Kings and Lord of Lords, never to die again because Hallelujah. he was first. Amen. Hallelujah. Now there was many resurrections that we read about in the Bible. The resurrection of the of the little girl that was 12 years old. She rose from the dead, but she died again. The widow from Nain's son, he rose from the dead, but he died again. Even Lazarus, he was dead for, he went on a dead vacation. He was dead for more than one day. But on the day the Lord called his name, he came forth, he rose. Amen, hallelujah. But the difference with them is they rose in the same bodies. We will rise in a new body. Glory, right? you know? yeah. glory. I was just reading somewhere that uh, <clears throat> that when the dead rise, they're going to rise in youthfulness. Amen. I thought, man, that's cool. Because this getting older stuff is getting really difficult. <laughs> Amen. But they're going to be young, vibrant. Hello. Are you with me? Amen. Praise God. If you read the scriptures of, that we're reading about you know, the resurrection, you can see what, you know, that the angel, you know, because the Bible says we're going to be like the angels. That's what Jesus said. Amen. And this angel, when you read in some of the other um, um, gospels, says that he was beautiful. And you can see here it says also that he was, uh, uh, he looked like a young person. Amen? Hello? Praise God. They saw, look at this, verse 5 says, As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting at the right hand. Hello? Yeah. So I said, Lord, praise God. Keep us all young. Like that, sister, you then? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they prepared, um, with loving care, they prepared the embalming fluids and the powders, and they headed toward the they headed toward the garden, the tomb. And Calvary's cross had kind of thrown a damper on everything, but they were still going to follow. They wanted to see their Lord. Amen. But they had to walk. Amen. They had to leave where they were at to go and do this. Amen. They had to walk. Was the Spirit of the Lord telling them? I believe they were being drawn by the Holy Spirit to that place. Amen. Even though the Lord kind of rebuked them when he said, didn't you? And Matthew says, uh, don't, you, don't you remember what he told you? Amen. But they were still going to anoint the dead. And that's why the angel told them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Amen. And um, it's just awesome, especially when you put them all together. Amen. So they walk. They came unto the tomb at the rising of the sun. The perfume is from the oil thickening into resin within the trunk of a tree. It is used for perfuming garments. Amen. And uh, we can see that in um, in um, Psalms 45 verse 8. It says, uh, all your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. Amen. And then. They used to use the same perfume to um, to perfume the beds so they wouldn't smell that bad again. Or I don't know. Anyways, um, in, in Proverbs seven seventeen it says, "I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon." Amen. So we can see that it's a common 
use of the thing, you know, like some some people will have a common soap that they use, I mean wash, clothes washing soap that they use, detergent, amen, because they like it for better than something else, amen. Well, this was something that was common for them to use, they use it for different purposes, they use it for clothes to make them smell better, they use them for the beds to make them smell better, amen, but they also use them to anoint those that have fallen asleep, amen, we're done. And that's where they get it from. Praise God. <clears throat> the Jews entombed, if possible, or else interred their dead. The rabbis would say this there. They would say, dust, dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Amen. Even enemies would be buried. Even the criminals would be buried. And uh, there's scriptures for all of that in this too, amen? It's just to give a place that, you know, that this, where Jesus is at, that he was really dead and really, you know, put in this tomb, laying in this tomb. And these women are going there, amen? And we're looking today at what they did, amen? Especially in a few moments, I'll, I'll be there to show you, amen? It says, um, to give place in one's, to, to give a place in one's tomb, was a special honor. And this tomb where Jesus was laid at was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, amen? And he saw Jesus up there, and so he wanted to give him a place special because I believe that him too, everybody was, Jesus died. So he was gonna bury him, or he buried him in his tomb, amen? Jesus didn't even have a place to be laid, I and mean, he didn't make no burial preparations, amen? Hello? Because he didn't intend to stay dead. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hello? Praise God. Now, Joseph went and he was able to hustle from Pontius Pilate or whoever's in charge to get the body of Jesus and take it down from the cross. So he took the body down. He took Jesus' body. Him and Nicodemus Amen. They're the ones that, that brought him down and carried him and laid him in the tomb. Amen. And again, these women, their job in their hearts, they felt, and I believe that they were compelled by the Holy Spirit to do this. Amen. Hello. So Joseph of Arimathea could not have done a greater honor to our crucified Lord's body than giving it a place in his in his own new tomb, fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 53, 9. Somewhere within the city, in that same city, the two Marys and Salome awaited the arrival of dawn. The night appeared to be endless, amen? Just think, they had this plan. They got it all together. They got all the stuff together, amen? But have you ever, you ever had something you were going to do the next day, amen? Something exciting, some place you were going to go or some place you didn't want to go and you were nervous about it. You were filled with anxiety. Amen. I believe that these women were going through something similar that it was hard for them to even sleep that night. Amen. They were going to go anoint the Lord's body. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe the light, the night lingered long for them. Amen. Within the garden tomb, the body of Jesus was resting where it had been placed. The women were anxious and perhaps impatient. The embalming substances were ready to go, but they had to go still, amen? And it's kind of like mind puzzling or thought provoking to compare the times as given by the, the gospel, the authors of the four gospel, because they all describe the time a little bit different, amen? But there's a good, there's a good um, thing that comes out of that as well, amen? Um, John 20 verse one says, Mary came when it was yet dark. Matthew 28, one says, the two Marys came as it began to dawn. Mark says they came at sunrise. It would appear the walk began during the pre-dawn darkness and they walked into the sunrise, amen? I just love that right there. Because it's every one of our stories. Amen. We start our walk. We started our walk with Jesus coming out of the darkness. Amen. 
And as we move closer to Jesus, the light came up for us. Hello? That is so awesome right there. Amen? And the women were, were, were full of worry. And what was their worry? Just like a lot of us sometimes, we can plan everything, but there may be something where we don't think we can get it done. Or we gotta start wondering how it's gonna happen. Hello? What was their worry? That stone. The stone that was rolled over the entrance to the tomb. How was that stone going to get moved? It's a real heavy stone. There's three women. Amen. Now I know you women can go over there and put it together. You guys can probably roll it aside. You guys are all strong women of God. Amen. But they looked at that as a problem and they were worried about it. Amen. Who shall roll up, who shall roll away the stone? And it's necessary to remember the New Testament, that the New Testament tombs did not have doors that you could just go open and do what they were going to do. The burial chambers were caves. The entrance was gained through an arc-like doorway. Stones of various, various sizes were rolled along a runway to block the entrance. And the purpose for that was to prevent animals from coming to the grave and desecrating it. Amen? Because if you didn't close that door, you know, you'd have to have that smell coming up, you'd have the animals coming over there, and you know, hyenas or whatever kind of animals they might have had at that time. Amen? Praise God. But this is only to give you a picture of what was their obstacle from what they needed to get done. Amen? Such stones can still be seen in the tombs of the kings in Jerusalem. When Joseph and Nicodemus left the tomb in the garden, they had rolled, they had rolled it into position. They had rolled into position a large circular stone, which probably was about six or more feet high and of considerable weight. It would have been impossible for the women to move the stone. It's inspiring to remember that God only expects us to do what we can. Hello? And that's what we need to remember sometimes because sometimes we try to go beyond. And we got to remember that we can only go as far as our human things. We get to the end of that, that's when faith takes over. Hello? It's been well said, man's limit, man's limit is God's opportunity. Amen. When man gets to the place that he knows that he can't do it on his own. When man gets to the place that he knows that I need help. That's when it's at man's limit. And that's when you call on the Lord. And he'll be there for you. Just like the three Hebrew children. Amen. They had a lot of faith. Amen. And they were willing to put their faith on the line. You can go ahead, King, and throw us into the fiery furnace. Amen. And if God saves us, praise God. But if he doesn't, let it be known that we didn't bow down to fear. Amen. Because Nebuchadnezzar was man. He heated it up seven times hotter. Beyond man's limitations. But who was with them in the fire? The Lord was. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If we proceed in the right direction, church, listen to this. If we go in the right direction, God will remove all the hindrances threatening to stop our progress. Amen. God will move those obstacles, those hindrances that are trying to stop you from getting ahead. Now the first thing that God wants you to get ahead in is to get ahead, amen, in following Him. Amen. Trusting Him. Knowing Him. Knowing that He has made a way for you. That's why we always go to that scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, that says God has a plan for you. 
But we have to be there. These women had to be there. There was a reason why they had to be there. There was a reason why the Holy Spirit brought them to that place that day. Hello? Praise God. So if we go into the right direction, God will move all the hindrances directly to stop our progress. When God says walk, it's better to obey than to wait. Because a lot of times we want to wait to see what everybody else is going to do. We got to be, you know, we, you know, we have to trust in God. Amen. Do you believe in God? Do you trust in God? Do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe that there's eternal life? Do you believe that God has forgiven your sins? Do you believe that you're right with God today? Amen. Those are all the important things. But it takes faith to move forward in it. To trust God with all of our hearts. Hello? Amen. And if we trust Him, the miracle that you may need may be right there waiting for you. Some people never get their miracle because they give up too soon. They stop drawing closer to the Lord. And they go back and they go back and they end up back into where they came from. Hello. Why, that's why the Bible gives us these scriptures, you know, and I don't say it in a mean way or an honorary way. That the pig goes back to the mud, the soul goes back to the dirt and the mud. After it's been washed and clean, that the dog returns to his own vomit. Because they don't give God a chance to really work in their life. Amen. People come and they just want to test, you know, they want to base what God is like from people. And yeah, we're all to be made and formed into the image and likeness of Christ. Amen? But people stop going because of other people sometimes. They're drawing closer to the Lord. But if we would exemplify and show our faith, stand up strong and say, you know what? My God can help you. Come to church. Because sometimes we spend a lot of good quality time telling people about God. But we forget the one important aspect that's so vital and important is people need to come to church. You can talk about you don't need to go to church. It doesn't. Every place I saw Jesus was church. Amen. He did some of his greatest works in the synagogues. He healed a woman that had been in bondage for 17 years. The devil had her in bondage. But Jesus went into the synagogue. Women were not even allowed to come into the synagogue. They had to stand in the back. They were kind of like a room where Caesar's at right now. Amen. And they had like a, a screen thing in front of it. But Jesus saw her. And he saw that she was in bondage for 17 years. And he said, woman, come forth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. She was sick. The devil really had messed her up. Amen. But God called her and saw her and said, come forth. That day she left there standing straight up and Lord. strong. Amen. Glory. Because God touched her. Glory. In the synagogue, there was a man with a withered hand or arm. And Jesus said, Stretch out your hand. And when he trusted, see, that's the faith part. What if he didn't want to stretch it out? He didn't want nobody to see his messed up arm. Because a lot of people don't want you to come to church. You don't want nobody to see your messed up lives, your smelly lives, your, your sinful lives. You want to keep it hidden behind maybe an aloe's coat. <laughs> Hello? But you got to trust God that he knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants to cleanse us, fix us up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. But we have to trust him. When God says walk, it's better to obey than to wait. Move forward. Amen. Move forward for God. Move forward for your own salvation. Amen. Let it grow. Let that salvation not only be a salvation for one person, but let it be a salvation that touches thousands of lives, hundreds of lives. 
your wives, your husbands, your sons, your daughters, your mothers, your fathers, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles. You know what I mean? Touch people, your neighbors, your co-workers. Amen. Touch people. These women in the story that we're talking about, they wanted to see Jesus. Amen. Praise God. But there was something that was going to block them. And it was that stone in front of the door, of the, of the tomb. So what were they going to do about it? You see, sometimes that's why it's so good to say when God said walk, it's better to obey than to, to wait. Because you see, they could have sat at home waiting or trying to figure out, or they could have called some of the disciples, you know, or they could have tried to make arrangements, and they could have waited and waited and waited, amen? They did, they moved forward, amen? They knew that there was an obstacle in the way, but it didn't hinder them from moving forward. Yeah. Are you? See, sometimes when we want to sit around and wait, we're not trusting God that He's already moving the hindrances. Yeah. We got to move forward and trust that God is going to make a way for you. Yeah. Hello. Verse 4 says, when they got there and they looked at their dilemma, they looked at what they thought was their problem, or it really was a problem, but God had already did something about it. Hello? God had already fixed the situation, but there's still a purpose behind it. Are you hearing the stone was rolled away. Faith is better than fear. No. Faith is better than fear. Had the woman stayed at home, debating ways and means to wish to overcome their problem, had they stayed at home, they would have lost the greatest thrill of their lives. They could have waited until the disciples were awake. They could have made arrangements to have at least two of them present at a specific time to roll back the stone. They could have done many things. Amen. But they didn't. They got what they had and they were moving toward Jesus. Are you here with me? Because they prefer to go immediately to take care of this business. Amen? Hello? Their aim was to get as close as possible to the Lord. That should be all of our aims every day. Even though we know, you know, because there's a lot of things in life that we wake up to try to separate us or pull us away from the Lord. Our own difficulties, our own challenges, our body aches, whatever, amen, headaches or whatever, amen, try to, you know, Stop us. Amen. But it's up to us to look at the Lord and have faith to move forward. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Their aim was to get close to Jesus. Slowly they walked along the darkened streets. And when at last they turned to enter the garden, behold. You think that each one of them, all three, there's all three, there's three women there. Mary said that this, and of course, Naomi said that, and, and then Mary Magdalene said she feels strong, you know, she's the one that had seven demons in her before. Amen? They, they weren't going to be able to do it, but yet they were going. Amen? And that's what we should do when we trust in God and don't lean to our own understanding. We got to keep moving forward for God. Hello? Amen. You have to. Tell people that Jesus is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to tell people that Jesus is alive. You have to reach out and cast out devils, lay hands on the sick and heal the sick. Hello. Faith moves mountains, folks. Are you here with me? No. Now, just because we have faith doesn't mean you can move a mountain, but God will move those mountains of troubles and problems and issues 
away. Amen. Hello. Hallelujah. They turned to into the garden and behold, wow, look. The stone was rolled away. Yeah. Today, folks, God has asked you to turn. And whatever's been hindering you, God has already moved it out of the way. Yeah. Whatever fear and worry, anxiety, or doubt, God has moved it out of the way. Yeah. Because all things are possible with Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's always a mistake to spend time dreading on the problems of tomorrow. And we are we we immaturely continue to worry about tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Wasn't there a song like that too? How many of you are always worried about tomorrow's problems? They're not even here yet. I don't I don't like to spend my time. They're just sweating it out, worried about tomorrow. I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to come, and God's going to get me ready for tomorrow. Amen. Whatever it brings. Hello? Amen. Hallelujah. The, the tomorrow when my mom passed away, I wasn't ready for that. But God got me through it. The tomorrow when my brother passed away, all of a sudden, I wasn't ready for that. But God got me through it. Amen. And I could go on with a bunch of tomorrows about things that, that happened that were very devastating. But God brought us through it. Yeah. Amen. Are you? Today, God has something special for you. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. All kinds of difficulties may appear to threaten our happiness. But if God be for us, who can be against us? Let us all walk by faith. Then nothing will be able to keep us away from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Nothing will be able to keep us from waiting for the Lord. These women, they went there. The whole message is the four, first four verses. But I want you to listen to the last four. It says here in verse 5, it says, As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting at the right side. They were alarmed. Because remember I told you that the Holy Spirit drew them there that day? Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. See the place where they made him. But there's still a reason why God drew them there that day. Amen. You know why? Because the men were hiding. Hello? The men were hiding. They didn't believe. Now the, I'm glad we only have a couple of guys who are three or four of them. Hallelujah. It's like one faster than one. But the men, the apostles, they were all hiding out. Now if Jesus told them he was going to rise on the third day, shouldn't they all be there waiting on the third day? Yes. Where were they? Amen. See, the great purpose in this story is so that you can see, amen, that God called three women forth. And they're the ones that became the first evangelists. They're the ones that God gave the commission to go and tell the apostles that Jesus Christ is alive. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? That should make all the women get all strong. God trusted us. Yeah, they always try to make us look like Eve, but God trusted us with a great commission. Hello? Yeah. To go tell the disciples to tell the people that Jesus is alive. Amen. You see?
See, that's why the Holy Spirit brought them there. Otherwise, who else was going to see? Who else was going to know that Jesus had risen? The disciples were hiding. Amen. But these three women, Mary Magdalene, a woman that you would say was an outcast from the outcast. Amen. At one time in her life, she was filled with seven demons. And you can imagine what kind of life she was leading. Amen. But Jesus cleansed her, cast the devils aside, purified her, sanctified her. Amen. And gave her the commission with Salome and the other Mary. Go and tell the people that Jesus is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the purpose, I believe. And that's the purpose that we should see. And we should not let whatever fears we have of telling people about Jesus Christ hinder us anymore. Amen. Tell your people, tell your brothers, tell your fathers, your children, amen. Brothers and sisters, it is vitally important that you tell them about everlasting life, the forgiveness of God, the remission of sins, that you tell them that God loves them, God cares about them, God will forgive them, God will take away their sins and wash them. You know, no matter if they're as red as crimson, he'll make them as white as snow. Amen, hallelujah. That's our God. And that's what you need to, if you don't have a heart to care about your, your, your own family, I always say your own family because those are the ones we should what? I love my family. I love my family in Christ. I want them to know about my Jesus. Amen. He's alive. He's real. Glory. But this world offers them it's nothing compared to what God can offer. Right. Hello. Don't you want that for your family and friends? Amen. The Lord said, when you start really believing that, you will fill this church up. I believe, Lord. You will fill this church up. Because you will get out of lukewarm Christianity. You will get out of shallow Christianity. And you will start telling people to believe in Christ. You will start praying for people. Because when we really stop to think about it, I'm not condemning or throwing rocks at anybody. But when was the last time you literally went and sought somebody to pray for? When was the last time you saw somebody's situation or God put them on your heart and you know he was telling you to reach out to them? And you didn't call them. You didn't visit them. You didn't give them clothes. You didn't feed them. You didn't give them a drink of water. Hello? See, that's that's the calling of God. That's when he comes. That's going to be, that's why he gave us the parable of the sheep and the goats. Amen? Amen. Do you believe Jesus is alive? Yes. Do you believe that with all your heart? Lord. And step out in faith and start telling people that Jesus, these women, they had to go. You see right here, look. He tells them, um, He has risen, he's not here. See the place where they But go. This is their commission, verse 7. But go. You can read these in the other gospels as well. But go tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out. It says the women went out and fled. They weren't walking anymore. Amen. They were about the Lord's business. Amen. Amen. They fled from the tomb. Hello. Because they were going to go do what God told them to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Through the angel, of course. But God told them and put them on a commission. And they went and they told the apostles. And you know, you can go on and read the story. But I just would encourage you that if there is hindrances in your life, for you to see these three people in the Bible as an example, that you don't have to be afraid. God will move those hindrances out of your way. But you just got to start walking and trusting Him. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen.
let's go ahead and uh, let's, that's the word of God for today. That's the word of encouragement for today. Um, God has something special for you. I believe that with all my heart, and I believe that God is going to move a lot of things that have been in your heart, that have been holding you back from really stretching your faith and reaching out. Amen. Um, I, I believe that. Amen. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray and, and uh, close out over there, and then we're going to have time with you. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for this wonderful uh, word that you have brought forth, Lord. We thank you that it's been very rich and encouraging. We thank you for the testimony of these three women, Lord God, that you used to teach us today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, you have touched our hearts today and that we will never be the same, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for moving those things that are in our lives that have been a hindrance to us. It may be people or things or fears or worries, anxieties, Lord. It may be something, Lord, but we thank you for moving it like you moved the stone so that these three women could get to the place where you wanted them to be at, to hear the good news, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for this, Lord. We give you all the glory for what you've done here today. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.